Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 938, range sum of a BST. Let's read the question prompt. Given the root node of a binary search tree and two integers, low and high, return the sum of values of all nodes with a value in the inclusive range, low, high. So if we were given this tree here as an example, and we were given that low equals 7 and high equals 15, then we'd want to return 32. How did we get 32? Well, essentially what we want to go do is go through the entire tree and then find the values that are inside this range and add them all together. So let's go through this and do a naive solution to this problem. So, you know, we'd start at the root is 10 between 7 and 15, right? That's the range that we're working with. Okay, is 10 in that range? Yes, it is. Okay, so now we can go into the left subtree. Is 5 in that range? No, it's not, so we can't consider it. Okay, let's go to its left. Okay, is 3 in that range? No, it's not, so we can't add it. What about 7? Uh, we're allowed because it's inclusive, so 7 would work. So we'd want to add 7 to our sum. Then we can go into 10's right subtrees, and then we see, okay, 15, is that in the range? Yes, it is, um, because it's inclusive. Okay, so we've identified that we need to add 10, 15, and 7. So when we do that, we do 10 plus 7 plus 15, we see that we get 32. So that's how they got the solution there, right? So that's 32. Well, okay, so that's the naive way to do this, where basically we just go through the entire tree and check every single node. Is it within the range? And if it is, no problem. The reason why this isn't the best solution is because we're actually given a binary search tree. So there's no reason to check every single element. Now, if we got to this five here, we know that the property of a binary search tree says that every element in its left subtree must be smaller than you know the parent node. So if we knew that five wasn't able to work, then there's no point of checking anything inside the left subtree because all these values will be less than five. And if five didn't work, then anything less than it won't work. And that's why we can just skip the left subtree and we could have gone directly to this right subtree. So we can use the properties of a binary search tree to actually cut down our search time. And instead of checking the entire tree, we can you know, make use of the fact that it's a binary search tree and cut down our search space and therefore not have to check every single node. Let's go to the code editor and see how we might implement this in code. Okay, we're in the editor. Let's write the code for the solution. But before we do, I think it's important to mention that this problem can be solved either iteratively or recursively. Now, the choice of what solution you choose to go with is entirely up to you. But I will caution you and say that in most real world scenarios, you probably aren't going to be shipping recursive functions into production. Obviously, if you make a mistake and you have some sort of infinite loop, your AWS bill or whatever cloud provider you use is going to be massive. So typically you want to use the iterative solution and I would recommend writing the iterative solution for whatever problem you encounter that can be solved either iteratively or recursively. That being said, we will go over both solutions just because a lot of the times your interviewer may say, okay, I see that you solved it the iterative way. Can you write the recursive solution? So it is important to know both, but if you had a choice, I would always solve it with the iterative solution and explain to your interviewer that, you know, we have the potential for overflow if, you know, our stack gets too large and that's not really something we want to do. So for safety, you know, we'll stick with the iterative solution. Um, okay, so let's write the code. So the first thing that we need to do is check what happens when we're actually given an empty root. In this case, you know, we can't sum anything if we don't have anything to sum over. So we would just return zero here. So we're going to say if not root, we can simply return zero. Otherwise, let's define a variable to store our result. We're going to say ands equals zero and we need to stack since we're going to be doing this iteratively um, to hold our kind of recursion here, pseudo recursion. Uh, so we're going to say while stack, we're going to say the current node that we're working with is going to be stack.pop. And what we want to do is we want to check whether the node we have is um, you know within the range that we need to sum over. So we're going to say if low less than or equal to node.val less than or equal to high, we're going to, whoops, 
we're going to add that node value to our answer. So we're going to say ands plus equals to node.val. Now what we're going to do is we need to check whether or not we need to go into the left subtree. Remember from the diagram, if the value uh, is greater than uh, the left, uh, sorry, if our, if our value here for node.val is greater than low, then that means that we're allowed to go into the left subtree. If it's too small already, then there's no point of checking the left subtree because the property of a binary search tree is that all values in the left uh, child are going to be less than you know the current parent nodes value. So we're going to say if low is less than node.val, then we're allowed to go into the left subtree. So we're going to say stack.append node.left. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the right. So we're going to say if node.val is actually less than the high, and then we're allowed to go into the right subtree. So we're going to say stack.append uh, node.right. And actually, one thing I forgot to do is that we may not uh, have a valid node here. So we're going to actually say if node, uh, because it could be the case that we append a node uh, dot right that, or a node dot left that is actually null. So obviously, if we try to do these checks on something that's null, um, it will you know blow up our code. So we actually have to make sure that node is uh, non-null here. So apologies for that, but it's, we seem to have fixed our mistake. Cool. So we have that, and then at the end, all we need to do is simply return our answer. Let's submit this and double check that it works. And here we go. Cool. So that works. That is the iterative solution. Um, it is in the worst case, we need to sum over the entirety of the tree. So, you know, we could be given a, a low that is like, you know, this integer minimum and then the high would be integer max. Then we have to sum over everything in our uh, tree. So in that case, you know, we'd have a big O of N runtime. And then since we're using a stack here, basically, um, you know, the stack could potentially end up holding, um, you know, all the nodes. So it'd be a big O of N on the um, space. So that is the iterative solution. Now let's code up the recursive solution. So let's just wipe everything uh, except the root check can stay. And OK, so we're going to do this recursively. So I'm going to just define a helper function here. We're going to call it DFS. We're going to say def DFS and we're going to say self. Oops, no. Uh, sorry, this won't be a helper. This will be outside. Yeah, so we'll say def DFS. So this will just be a method here on the class solution. We're going to pass in the node low and high. And we're going to say if node, we're going to say basically going to do the exact same thing we did before. So if low less than or equal to node.val less than or equal to high, then we're going to say self dot we'll just call it range sum or we can call it answer it doesn't matter and we're going to add to it the node.val and then again we need to do the checks for the left and the right if um, we're allowed to go into those trees so we're going to say if low less than node.val then we're going to say self.dfs into the left subtree passing low and high and then we're going to say if node.val is less than high then we're going to go into the right subtree. So we're going to say node, oops, node.right, low, high. And that's all we need to do for the DFS function. Now let's define our function for the answer here. So we're going to say self.range sum equals zero. And then we're going to call our DFS function on the root, pass in low, high. And then at the end, all we need to do is return self.range sum. And let's submit it. Double check we didn't make any bugs. Cool. Uh, so the time complexity of the recursive solution is still going to be big O of n, right? We could potentially need to touch every single node in the tree. So that's not going to change. Uh, the space complexity is actually also going to be big O of n. And the reason for this is even though we're not defining any extra, you know, space for the, you know, uh, storing, you know, the stack like we did iteratively. Uh, we do have the implicit space used by the actual recursive stack. So we do need to count that and consider it um, as, you know, big O of N uh, space. So for both the iterative and the recursive solutions, we're looking at big O 
uh, big O of N runtime and also big O of N space. So that is how you solve uh, range sum of a BST. I hope you enjoyed this solution. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other videos if you're preparing for on-site interviews and happy coding.